phone, call now. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. It's Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man broadcasting on the airwaves of 1090, the stream of YouTube, Tonight, you're going to catch up to this segment on television on Channel 4 San Diego and a part of the Cox Your View Network all throughout Southern California. And, of course, all the audio podcast platforms whenever you want it. Now, I'm super excited that Landon Donovan is here right now because yesterday when I texted Landon, I said, hey, you know, when you get back to San Diego, can we have you on the air? And he's like, I'm back. And I thought, well, yesterday is Monday and the World <laughs> Cup final was Sunday and I couldn't really figure out the math. So here he is, the greatest U.S. soccer player, the former coach of the Loyal, uh, the television analyst from Fox for their World Cup coverage, and I could obviously keep going on and on and on. Great friend of the show, Landon Donovan, is back. Hi, Landon. What's up, man? Good to be back. How did that happen? How would you get back so fast? So the final was at 6 p.m. local time in Doha. Um Ended, we ended up probably 11 p.m. or midnight, and then my flight was at 9 a.m., and they needed us to get there about four hours early because everyone was sort of mass exodus out of Qatar. So got on a plane and was back last night. So um, how, how many fly? planes? Yeah, that's what I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to hear. How do you get from Qatar to San Diego? Uh, Qatar, San Fran, and then a, qu a short layover, and then to San Diego. It was actually really fast. The other option was to go to LA and drive, but it was just easier to to fly into San Diego and then get home. So it was actually not bad. And for those of us who have kids, I mean, spending 15 hours getting served with good food, drinks, watching movies is not the worst thing. Is this a commercial airliner? Commercial airliner, yeah. Who, who's the fly? I mean, like, if I were going to go now visit. Yeah, Qatar Airways. Okay. Gotcha. I've seen commercial. They got bomb planes. Dude, they're amazing. Really? They're huh. amazing. Yeah, they're amazing. The actual, like, the, the service, the food, the airplane itself was phenomenal. It's really good. Isn't that what the live golfers fly on? Yeah, probably. That That's what I thought. Me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they how, have... How, they have endless money, right? So they this it's a whatever a state owned airline, and they they did everything right. It was phenomenal. The the travel was phenomenal. How many people? I mean, is it a, when I say private? I mean, is it just like the Fox crew that came back together and they had one play, or is it the general no, public? No, it wasn't. It wasn't private. It was a I was on a whatever normal airplane because um, mm -hmm. the Fox crew remember it comes from all over the place, and what people don't know either is there are literally dozens and dozens of people who went probably in October to set up the set, to build the set that we had that was insane. So there are people that are hired that go months in advance and then stay after weeks after to break everything down and fly back. And they all come from different parts of the U.S. So people are going to all different, parts, all different places. Yeah. We're talking to Landon Donovan this afternoon, just back from the World Cup after doing all this work for, for Fox, which – Landon, I'll start off by asking you, did you like what you were doing? I loved it. I loved it. I've done it before, Scott, and I was not very good at it. And I think having the experience of coaching really helped me a lot. Um, there's, a, there's a technical side of, and you know this because you speak for a living, but of how you speak, uh, when you speak especially during a soccer game. And my natural energy is very low and chill. And so I have to really bring it out of myself to, to remotely sound excited. And the other thing is, is I've seen a million soccer games in my life. So there are very few things that really, really excite me, but I have to bring that out of myself so that the viewer is engaged in that way. And I think I got better at it. Um, I really enjoyed it and having the ability to sort of learn as I was going and get better and improve was nice for me. And by the end, I just, I really loved it. Which one oh, did you like you better, do? dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think we all have the same question. Would you yeah. rather be in TV or would you rather be on the sidelines? Um, I, I mean, being in TV is, it's not the same thrill as being on the sidelines. The energy is not the same, but there's something fun about 
still being involved in the game day, which is, which is fun. And there is, you know, when you're doing live TV, there is an element of pressure and performance that mm -hmm. I, I like, you know, I did yeah. that for a living and, and there is an element of that that is really exhilarating too. So I was actually uh, going to ask you uh, what you like doing better. If you like doing in-game analysts or do you like doing uh, the studio better? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good question. Um, when you're in the game, when you, when I'm, when I'm at the stadium calling the game, there's so much space to talk about that specific game. And I really like that because like I said, now that I've coached, I see the game totally differently and I can still speak to individual moments because I've lived those moments as well. And what a particular player is feeling or thinking, but now I can get inside a coach's mind to some extent and sort of understand what they're trying to do collectively as a team. And I tried to help bring that to the viewer in a way that was um, digestible. So it's not just soccer talk, but I, I realize there's a lot of people who turn this event on every four years and then don't watch soccer again for four more years. So try to do it that way. But then just being on the set is fun because you have personalities around you that you get to interact with and engage with. Um, so you, I think if I had, you, you know, if you had a gun to my head, which is, what do I enjoy more? Yeah. Um, I don't think I can tell you. I think you'd have to kill me. Does it help that you worked with like Ian Dark too, who I consider like probably phenomenal. one of the best? Yeah, he's phenomenal. So I um, I'm not an expert in any of this, but I'm learning that there are basically two types of, and maybe this is relevant to to what you do too, Scott. There are two types of hosts slash, you know, in this in in, in this instance, you're interviewing, right? In soccer, there are two types of comment play-by-play -play commentators. There are guys who are, for lack of a better way of saying it, it's more about them and what they're doing and what they're saying versus somebody who's trying to set you up or get you to talk about what, what they want you to talk about because you have the expertise in that way. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, I don't know if that is resonating, but Ian, time. Ian is constantly – He's, he's telling the viewer what's going on, but he's constantly trying to bring me in. And, and over the course of the tournament, we got more and more comfortable with, I try not to talk if I don't have something to say. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate watching sporting events where people just talk and talk and talk. And it's like, just shut up, please. Let, I can see what, you don't have to tell me that Brady dropped back and threw a seven, a seven yard out. Like I can see that, right? Just let me digest that. If you see something really interesting, tell me and let me learn about it. So I try not to talk. And Ian and I found this good rapport where he would basically talk about what's happening. And then if he really wanted me to come in, he would look at me, he would turn and actually look at me. And so then I would come, but otherwise he would talk. And then if I didn't say anything, he just let it breathe for a bit. And, and I think that that rapport was pretty good and definitely got better as we went on. You say that this, the coaching helped you become a better broadcaster, but could the broadcasting also help you become a better coach? Oh, interesting question. Um, yeah, maybe. Well, he's not a coach anymore. He could be. He sounds like he he's open for hire. Right, for he's now. gonna be. He's gonna be another. He's gonna be a coach again, a manager. Um, yeah, it could because you're actually looking at the game. Well, one, you're looking at the game from way up above, which gives you a whole different perspective, which is what we do after games when we analyze. But two, watching different coaches do different things, you can learn a lot. So, yeah, it's a good question. I, I would say there's no question the two have helped each other for me. Right, nice. Landon Donovan is back from covering the World Cup for Fox. Um, I, I could honestly talk to you for hours because I really would like to hear about the experience of what it was like. But then the World Cup final happened. And the storyline of Messi being in his 30s, and this is kind of the last chance, so to speak, and then the young kid Mbappe on the other side who already has a World Cup title. Alex educated us the whole way, Land, and the fact that these two guys play club soccer together in Paris, and now Messi goes back you know, to Paris where they love him probably as a pro, but they're like, oh, my God, he just killed us in the World Cup. To see athletes perform – the biggest stars on the biggest stage at the highest level, and then put on the performances that Messi and Mbappe did from your perspective, what was that like for you to watch that go down? Phenomenal. And I just said, I've seen us, you know, I've seen a thousand soccer games. It's hard for me to like really feel inspired and awed by a game, but I was, I was, I was fully in the interesting thing for Messi. And I said this before the game, 
on the pregame show leading up to the game to the final with Messi is that imagine a scenario I tried to help the U S viewer understand. Imagine a scenario that Brady had been the player he had been his whole career, but for some reason he hadn't won a Super Bowl. right? He'd just been phenomenal, got him to multiple Super Bowls, but had never won, right? And then you knew this was going to be his last Super Bowl and he had one last chance and you're watching that happen live. How many times in your life do you get to watch an experience like that? Messi has done everything you can imagine in the game, broken every record, done everything except this one thing has eluded him, which has prevented many people from calling him the best ever. Uh, you could say Michael Jordan, if he had been to eight NBA finals, but never won. And you knew he was going to retire the next year and he got to the finals and it was game seven against the Lakers. And there was this one game that we were all going to get to witness to see if he could do it. And then Messi did it. Right. And so watching that happen and being there, with thousands of Argentinians behind us and tens of thousands in the stadium, the whole city, the whole night was, you could hear them chanting the whole night. It was phenomenal to be a part of a sporting event there in the city, halfway across the world and watch that happen. Yeah. But you see, the thing is the comparison is so great about Brady. Now imagine if in the scenario you're talking about Brady has never won that Super Bowl. He's playing against Patrick Mahomes, who's the up and coming young yeah. kid superstar. Mahomes has already won a Super Bowl and Mahomes goes off, throws for 500 yards in a losing performance. That was Mbappe. That's right. Which is, which is phenomenal too. I mean, this guy scored a hat trick in a world cup final and lost. And he, he single-handedly cause France were really poor on the day. He single-handedly took them and said, we are not going to lose. And he scored two goals in quick succession and then scored another goal. And it was, it was so impressive to watch, but he becomes the secondary story because of what Messi did. I know Andy no one Donovan really talks about it because Messi's obviously the story and with good reason, but did you see all the mind games that Emmy Martinez was working mm -hmm. on France in those penalty yeah. kicks? I read a full thread breakdown and like saw screenshots of everything he was doing to mess with them. That to me was just like really flew under the radar of how much credit that guy deserves. Can, yeah, can I agreed. understand? Can, can you tell us what that is, Alex? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Can you explain that? Yeah, uh, there's just instances where this goalkeeper kind of and he progressed in his Antics. in his s housery of what he was doing. <laughs> like first, he kind of wanted to get a vibe of what the ref would let him get away with, and it got mm -hmm. to the point where when a France, uh, I can't remember which one, I think it was the second guy that missed. Like he grabbed the ball and like threw it like 20 yards outside the box. It got to that level. Like he was just playing mind games with them. And he really owned the penalty kicks as much as a goalkeeper can own it without really blocking shots. Yeah. So my take on all this is I personally, I can't stand in a game when a penalty kick is called and every player from the other team surrounds the ref, surrounds the shooter, stands around the penalty spot. It takes two or three minutes till everyone calms down. I would like to see a rule implemented where immediately when a penalty is called, if anybody walks into the penalty box, you get a yellow card right away because it's just, it's just shenanigans and it's stupid and it takes too much time, et cetera, et cetera. That being said, if you can get away with it, you get away with it. And right now the rule is you can do whatever you want. So that's within a game in a penalty shootout, like Alex said, Emmy Martinez like went way above and beyond what a lot of goalkeepers do. But ultimately, if you can gain a little percentage and get in someone's head, why wouldn't you do it, right? If you're allowed to now, should he be able to throw the ball 20 yards away? I personally don't think so, you know, without getting punished, but the rules don't say anything different. So why wouldn't you do it? And if it means winning versus losing in that moment, go for it. Yeah. So I, I've been on the field, Landon, as a field goal kicker for a last second field goal. And I know what that feels like. Yeah. What does it feel like when you're in penalty kicks? And I know you've never been in a penalty kick situation for the world cup final, but mm -hmm. you've been in plenty of penalty kicks in your career. Um, how much can a keeper mess with the shooter? And do you credit the keeper more for what he was doing as, as the, you know, why the results were what they were? Well, he still had to make the saves, mm -hmm. right? You can do all that you want. If you don't make the save, it doesn't matter. So, but absolutely, I mean, listen, we're human, right? So 
if there's a reason why sometimes teams call timeouts before a kicker kicks a field goal or you know imagine if you're about to kick a field goal and there's 30 seconds on the play clock and for 15 seconds uh, an opposing lineman is up in your face telling you how much you suck and that you're going to miss it. And if you miss this, imagine all the millions of people who are going to be hammering you on Twitter and whatever. And then he goes back. And, I mean, you're human. Of course, that's yeah. going to impact you. How could that yeah. not impact you? Yeah. The ideal is that you don't think about anything. It's just you, the goalie and the goal. But the reality is a human being, you're going, oh, my God, there's so many people. Look at these 80,000 people. There's 80 million people back in Argentina or France. Watch it. I mean, how can you not think about that? And so, that's what makes penalty kicks so interesting. Any professional player at that level, just standing in training with no one else around, with nothing on the line, that's like a 95 out of 100 you're making those. Now, right? you, get to, you get to a World Cup and it becomes, you know, high 70s, low 80s are the mm -hmm. percent of the time. It's mm -hmm. just, it's all mental. This, all this is great. All that talk is great. I want to talk about you, okay? All right. <laughs> It looks it, it looks like there's some difference of opinion on what should happen with the United States men's coach because that thing ain't coming here next and we can't be embarrassed. We got to make it past what we did last time because I'm in it as long as they in it. When they out, I'm kind of out too. Unless <laughs> what happened happened. So mm -hmm. with the World Cup coming here, are we going to change the direction of the team? I know we're young, mm -hmm. but what can we do to make sure that we're more viable next time around? Well, my opinion is you keep most of these same kids around because the, the experience of the World Cup is so valuable. So having that experience in their back pocket is valuable. And my opinion also with coaching, and this is having been a coach now, and we've seen it at San Diego Loyal, our progression from the first year, just missing out on the playoffs, second year, making the playoffs, but playing a, a, an away game because of where we finished the third year, finishing second and having a home game. That continuity in the players and I think the coaching staff, I hope, is really valuable. So I would like to see that progress and continue because you bring someone new in and you're starting all over from square one. Now, to your qu bigger question, are we able in four years time to you know, completely change everything we do and be Argentina? No, we're not. We are on a slow progression towards becoming one of the better or best teams in the world, but it's going to take a lot of time. And so people's expectations, if your expectations are that, you know, four years from now, it's going to be totally different. It's not, we will be a better team. Um, this sport, unfortunately, you can be the better team on a lot of days and still lose. So I, I wouldn't judge it based on what happens in one game in four years from now, but if you can see dramatic improvement, consistently happening, then we're happy. That's where we want to get to. So will you play a part in that? That's my lead up question. Will you play a part in that? Uh, I don't intend on that right now. No. Okay. Okay. But Is there a reason just, why? Well, there's because I mean, you're free. You free. I'm not free. I got three kids, man. Well, you know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Professionally, <laughs> professionally you're free. You're tied to them forever. I mean, are yeah, you trying to ask? Are you trying to ask Landon if he's going to be the coach of the U.S. Men's National Team eventually? Yeah. I mean, potentially one one day long down the line, but I'm still very young at this and new at this. So there's there's a long. It's not it's not as easy as people think. Trust me. There's a long way to go for me. Is there an answer to the question why? Like, why is Argentina so mm -hmm. much better than us? Why is, yes. why is, why is France so much better than us? I mean, are, are yes. our athletes not as fast? Are they not as skilled? I mean, I'm just curious. You must know. No, it's, it's all in development. So those countries more or less have one sport that they're developing players for, right? So ev almost everybody in France plays soccer growing up. Almost everyone in Argentina plays soccer if there are a hundred athletes in argentina elite athletes 96 of them are playing soccer and four are playing rugby right <laughs> for us if there are 100 athletes 15 are playing soccer 40 are playing basketball 40 are playing football and 20 are playing, i don't know if the math adds up but you know you yeah. know what i mean yeah so and then some are playing golf and some are playing hockey and some are playing tennis and so what we have to do is the the biggest deficit still is in our development at a young age of players and what i mean by that is we have the, the biggest challenge we have still in our country is every coach wants to coach the men's national team in other countries 
there are coaches who love and are very good at coaching eight-year-olds to be better nine-year-olds. And that is what they love and they spend all their time. And every youth coach we have thinks they should be coaching the national team. Now, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's kind of true. But in other countries, when I, when I played in Germany, there was a 60-year-old man who, who coached the under-16 team that I was on, and he had done it for 25 years, and he was elite and knew how to make a 16-year-old better by the time they were 17. He didn't care about the first team, didn't care about coaching the net. That was not his thing. He got paid well to do it, and that's what he was good at. And it's, it's not a secret. It's just if you have the best coach for seven-year-olds, and he does that, and then the best coach for eight-year-olds, and she does that, and the best coach for nine-year-olds, and et cetera, et cetera, then you get players that are you know, of the highest quality, and that's still we're still lacking that. Hey, Landon, hold that thought for just one second. Do you have a little bit more time? If you do, great, because I would like to go down this road just a little bit more. Okay, look, everybody stick around. Landon Donovan is here. We're talking about the World Cup. We're talking about the U.S. soccer team, coaching, et cetera. We're in the 7 Mile Casino studio, 7milecasino.com. More with the great Landon Donovan coming right back here on Kaplan & Crew. Kaplan & Crew tonight is brought to you by Jackery Solar Generator. Explore further with Jackery Solar Generator. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew. Every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk and the Mightier1090.com. Absolutely. The best part of the day is working with the team and working directly with customers. Just because it's fun and I enjoy collaborating. I enjoy watching the customers' reactions when the designers come up with their spaces. And we, we really take pride in the team effort and what we accomplish in the end. I can tell that uh, the team we have, uh, accountability is very important. They feel like the work that we do is, is not just a reflection of themselves, but a reflection of us. We've always been a design build company, but now we've taken design, not only our architectural, but interior design to a completely different level. The philosophy of integrity here at Murray Lampert is always doing the right thing even when someone isn't looking. In turn, the homeowners get a really great product. We're truly a team at Murray Lampert Design Build Remodel and we don't take that lightly. next outdoor family adventure awaits. Exploring and adventuring to new places, creating beautiful memories for your ultimate family experience using clean and pure energy. Endless charging for endless possibility. Fueling all your outdoor needs. Our easy to set up solar panels offer clean and powerful energy. Pass-through charging means you can charge still fully enjoying your adventures. Experience your dreams with Jackery. Be free on your travels, enjoying delicious meals. Listen to the sounds of nature or a great film, peacefully and quietly. Making these small moments count. Jackery Solar Generator. Jackery.
Kaplan and Crude tonight is brought to you by Jackery Solar Generator. Explore further with Jackery Solar Generator. Listen to The Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier1090.com. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 a.m. ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. The Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank needs your help feeding families and seniors in need this holiday season. Provide food assistance to those in need at hundreds of food distribution sites throughout San Diego County. Today we're here at one of our senior food program distribution sites in Chula Vista where we're going to be serving over 450 seniors at this one location. The San Diego Food Bank has been around since 1977. Uh, we are currently serving over 500,000 people every single month. We were serving 350,000 people throughout all of San Diego County just before the pandemic. So the need has definitely increased. We are here and wanting to make sure that families um, know where they can access food and that folks who want to contribute know how to donate to the food bank to continue to support those 500,000 families every single month. Happy Holidays from the San Diego Food Bank. Absolutely, the best part of the day is working with the team and working directly with customers. Just because it's fun and I enjoy collaborating, I enjoy watching the customers' reactions when the designers come up with their spaces. And we, we really take pride in the team effort and what we accomplish in the end. I can tell that uh, the team we have, uh, accountability is very important. They feel like the work that we do is, is not just a reflection of themselves, but a reflection of us. We've always been a design build company, but now we've taken design, not only our architectural, but interior design to a completely different level. The philosophy of integrity here at Murray Lampert is always doing the right thing, even when someone isn't looking. In turn, the homeowners get a really great product. We're truly a team at Murray Lampert Design Build Remodel and we don't take that lightly. At Shelter to Soldier, being a private nonprofit, we rely on the community. Thankfully, we have sponsors like the Barnes Firm that get behind us. We understand uh, the difficulties that uh, many of our, our veterans uh, face when they come back into uh, civilian life. And uh, this program just seemed like the perfect fit. Today we're catching up with Barney. He is now in our matching phase of our program. He is meeting eligible veterans in what we call speed dating. How's it going? So we have just uh, recently approved five new veterans for our program. So um, Barney will be meeting every single one of them to see if he is the perfect match for them. Barney's perfect date would be a nice long walk on the beach, and then he would like to end the night with a nice dinner with his uh, veteran. We got to find the, the right person for the right dog. We're breaking that stereotype of what a homeless person is, this subculture of society. We're just brothers, sisters, mom, dad, grandmas, and grandpas being part of the solution instead of part of the problem. So ladies and gentlemen, left hand side. We make sure that there's uh, no drug dealing, drug use, encampments around their facilities or anywhere in our neighborhood. We self-police, and that's all a testament to the folks here that used to be out there. Watch out for sharp objects, ladies and gentlemen. Ed's, he's a perfect example of the caliber of the men and women that have been outside on the streets. Here in San Diego for over 50 years, Years, have worked all my life since 1975 but suddenly I had a stroke and I lost all muscle control one of the things you never think will happen to you but it can the onus of responsibility need to go to our folks like Ed people you've seen here that have tremendous skill and give them the opportunity to shine it's that peer-to-peer -peer support talking to the folks out there and bringing folks in here to start the process happy holidays from the Alpha Project Customer service is a priority for us. We are door and window dealers and specialists in a variety of different product lines. 
You're gonna see 16,000 feet of the largest showroom in San Diego for doors and windows. We have a magnificent space here, much larger than any other dealer in the area, which makes it very comfortable for our customers to see and feel the windows in person. What you need to know about your project, we're gonna ask questions about that. We're gonna ask about your lifestyle, perhaps whether you have children or pets, which direction the doors and windows are facing. Do you have a view? Is it about opening space? We want to ask these questions to best service you and provide an overall great experience. People find these things beneficial because we can address perhaps threshold conditions, screen conditions, wall depths, colors, anything else that's important to the project prior to ordering, ensuring again complete satisfaction in the long run. Give us a call or visit us online at PriorityDW.com. At Shelter to Soldier, being a private nonprofit, we rely on the community. Thankfully, we have sponsors like the Barnes Firm that get behind us. We understand uh, the difficulties that uh, many of our, our veterans uh, face when they come back into uh, civilian life. And uh, this program just seemed like the perfect fit. Today, we're catching up with Barney. And he is now in our matching phase of our program. He is meeting eligible veterans in what we call speed dating. How's it going? So we have just uh, recently approved five new veterans for our program. So um, Barney will be meeting every single one of them to see if he is the perfect match for them. Barney's perfect date would be a nice long walk on the beach, and then he would like to end the night with a nice dinner with his uh, veteran. We gotta find the, the right person for the right dog. Drivers are getting in accidents at a rate we've never seen before, jumping 18% since 2020. There are higher incidents of speeding and more aggressive driving since the pandemic began. Please slow down and drive safely. It can save a life. Murray Lampert's design process is very collaborative. We love the process, and what's best about the process is the way that it can flex as needed. So if there's a new piece of technology that's available that's really going to help us out make a more accurate model, we're going to utilize that. We'll send the measure off team to the house and they will end up scanning the house using drones, LIDAR scanning, lasers and tape measures to measure every square inch of the home. Then they'll take that information back to the office and build a 3D model of the home. We'll be upfront and honest if they're asking for things that may be out of their budget, we're gonna let them know upfront. We're always motivated to strive for excellence. There's kind of not another way to be. We do the best work we can and ultimately make the homeowners happy. Uh, what makes me proud is when we present that 3D model to the homeowners and we wow them. Sometimes we even bring tears to their eyes because they love the design so much. That brings me a lot of joy. Homelessness in San Diego is on the rise, and the need for assistance and shelter has never been greater. For 34 years, Alpha Project has been empowering people, helping them to achieve self-sufficiency. Every day, we're inspired by the power of the human spirit. But we can't do it without your support. Your generosity helps us change lives every day. Please donate at alphaproject.org today. I feel like I have the fun part of the job where I get to help out and make my clients' houses look beautiful. We start with looking at the floor plan, space planning, and then we look at countertops, tile, uh, backsplashes, flooring, cabinets, everything like that. We have a lot of client meetings start in our conference room. Sometimes we have some clients that have already selected certain items that they want to incorporate into their project. We want to make sure they're happy with it because they're going to be living with it for a very long time. Sometimes we'll do something that you know goes totally with the style and then we'll have a total outlier option for the client and a lot of the times they end up going with that because they want to see something totally different. We want to make sure that we're focusing in on our clients. I really want to make sure at the end of the day that clients are happy that I'm keeping up with my communication with them and that we know that at the end of the day as well and moving through the process of construction and everything that we're going to have a successful project. At the Barnes Firm, we're seeing more pedestrian and bicycle accidents. Drivers are rolling through red lights and distracted driving makes every intersection a danger zone for pedestrians. Look both ways when crossing, even if you have the right of way. Welcome back. 
This is Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. Hey, great friends. We welcome you back inside the 7 Mile Casino Studio, 7milecasino.com with Grande and the Brown Man. This is Kaplan and Crew. And Landon Donovan is still with us. So, Landon, we were talking about coaching. So, that's very interesting that you do all the things that you just talked about. When you were 16 years old and you were playing overseas, were you just like an average American player uh, who happened to be over here in Europe, or were you elite amongst those kinds of guys? I was elite um, amongst Americans, but I was I was just another guy there because there were guys from Brazil and Croatia and Argentina and Serbia and Macedonia and Poland. And so I was, I was just like them. Um, They had all been developed to that extent. And, you know, I was one of 40 or 50 16 year olds that they were hoping might pan out and maybe one or two pan out. And that's the reality in America. I was a superstar. And so that's, that's where we have to get to where we have 40 or 50 kids like me at that age that are competing at a high level. And then, you know, a few of them end up on the national team. And then that's how you get a really good national team one day. I I really love what you were saying though, about coaching and about wanting to coach kids. Cause you know, we have a listener um, who's a really close friend of the show named Christian Hogan. And he told me this story that he was coaching his little kids team and uh, you were there at the field this night. This is only a couple months ago. He's a guy who's got long dreadlocks, Landon. And, oh, yeah. and you saw him coaching and you walked up to him. He was so honored. He was like, Landon Donovan walked up to me and told me that he likes the way I'm coaching my kids. I loved was, it. It was it so was cool. At, um, it was in, I don't know if it was still Escondido, but it was pretty, it was pretty inland. And I think, I believe it's the same guy he coaches for Vista. Vista Storm. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I watched my boy was playing that day and I was watching him before my boy was playing. I was watching him coach and most youth coaches, and you know this, Scott, having been around youth soccer coaches, and I'm sure it's the same. I, actually, I've been at flag football games. It's the same. Mm-hmm. Everybody there, I'm saying everybody, m- uh, most people there and most parents there, one, think they know what they're talking about and two, just care about winning the game. Yeah. And he spent so much time just even during the game, one, he didn't talk a lot, which I loved, but he just spent time helping them understand what the game is supposed to look like. Oh, this is where you should be. This, there's a way you can win. If you just get your best player in the front of the field and your next best player in the back of the field, and you just kick it as hard as you can over everyone's head. And one guy runs and (laughs) scores and you can win. Yep. And that's, that's great, but you're not teaching them anything. Right. And then his demeanor was so good and he was calm and he was positive. He didn't speak too much. And I was just, it was, it really, really was refreshing because I hadn't seen that. He's an amazing guy. He's got a son who's uh, 21 years old, who's lived a life of muscular dystrophy and in a a wheelchair. And this guy has dedicated his life to his family, to his kid. Uh, He's had a tragedy in his life with another child. Um, And he just, Mm. everything is about these children and and really being the coach that you were talking about. We're talking to Landon Donovan. Landon, I know you got to hustle up just real quick. Do you know Messi? Do you did you ever play with him against him? I, maybe I should know this stuff, but is there a relationship there? I don't know him personally at all. Actually, I, my when I came home, my wife had an amazing um, present for me. She redid my office. So this ball, let's see if I can point this ball yeah. up here. Yeah, the yellow one. one is. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. It's the white one. It's the white one. The other side. That ball is my hundredth cap ball. Uh So my hundredth game ever for the U S we played against Argentina in New York. It was a friendly game and I could tell he didn't, it was a game that meant nothing. And I could tell he didn't really want to be there. They flew him in. And it was one of those things where when you promote the game, it's like, well, Messi has to play at least 45 minutes if you're going to get your money and that kind of stuff. So he didn't really want to be there. Um, but he was very gracious before the game. It was there was a small ceremony for my hundredth game, and he was the captain, so I got to exchange uh, little flag banners with him. But the best thing about it was during the game. Remind you, he did not want to be there. I can promise you, it was the last thing he wanted. He wanted to be resting or back home or preparing for games that mattered. And he played the first forty-five minutes, and there's one play I'll never forget. It, Scott, 
there were about three or four of us. It was in the middle of the field and he had the ball and we were trying to tackle him. And it got to the point where like in a soccer game, so people understand, you can try for the ball and then accidentally foul someone or you know someone's going to get by you. You're going to foul them. So you foul them, they fall to the ground, the referee blows the whistle, but you, you stop the play right there because you know how dangerous a player like that is. I tried, another guy tried, another guy tried, and he just <laughs> bounced off like a pinball. And we couldn't foul him. He, his center of gravity was so low. And we were, I mean, we're grown men trying to foul him. And he's not a big guy. And you could not foul him. And he just danced through us. And I remember looking at one of my teammates. I'm like, what the hell are we supposed to do? This is impossible. <laughs> and this is, again, we were elite athletes. This isn't him playing against high school kids. We were some of the best in the world. And, and he just danced through us like it was no problem. How old were you at that time? Um, are you older than him? Uh, yeah, I'm five years older, so I must have been late 20s. Okay, gotcha. Damn. It was insane. God, it's amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing. Last thing, I mean, was it fun? Did you feel safe? I'm just curious, like the, the experience. Yeah. I've never been in the Middle East before. How was it? So I've been to Saudi Arabia before um, with Bayern Munich. We went in preseason. I felt safe and fine. Obviously, the company I was with lent itself to being more safe. I've been to Dubai before, which was no problem. Doha was extremely safe. Um, it is one of the safest countries in the world. You have to remember it's incredibly wealthy and oftentimes um, unsafe, unsafety or safety issues come from poverty, right? A lot of times. And so they don't have that. So there's, there's, you know, there's people who are growing, who grow up as Qatari receive money from the government. There's, there's no poverty there from the, for the Qataris. Um, aesthetically, it was beautiful. They built, I mean, they spent like a quarter of a trillion dollars building up infrastructure, hotels, stadiums. So it looked beautiful. It's right on the water in the Persian Gulf. So it was beautiful. The food was excellent. Um, I'm not trying to say that, you know, two months from now, it's going to be exactly the same because I know they want to put their, <laughs> their best foot forward for the world cup. I'm not naive to that, but if I just speak about my experience, the people were very kind. I really, really enjoyed it. And I know all of, you know, the issues that are presented there. Um, I'm not naive to that, but my personal experience was great and I really enjoyed it. Awesome. LD, um, if you, before you leave, people would be pissed at me if I don't at least just ask you anything that you know that we should know that you could share with uh, potential for MLS in San Diego. I'll, I can just echo what we've already said publicly. Andrew's already said our, our owner. Um, we are having, continuing to have conversations. Uh, San Diego Loyal is playing next year at, we are playing at Torero again. Um, if, if it works out in a way that, that benefits everyone, we are absolutely open to it. So I can't, you know, there's, there's no more info I have other than that. I do know that the timeline is accelerated. People want to, to say yes or no soon. So I think we'll have info sooner than later. Um, but at this point, excited for next year for, for us, for San Diego Loyal, and then we'll see where it goes. All right. Landon Donovan. LD, thank you for doing this. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, we appreciate you too, man. You were great. I'm telling you, I was texting you during the, the World Cup, and it's amazing how you're on TV and I'm texting you, hey, dude, you're killing it. You're doing great, and you're getting back. But I'm telling you, man, from a from a TV analyst perspective, as a viewer and as someone who's in this industry, I thought you I thought you crushed it. I really appreciate that, man. I tried uh I tried to I, I watched a lot of I watch a lot of sports like you do. And there's there's just a point you reach where you're like can you tell me something I don't know, please? Otherwise, just stop talking. Like, <laughs> I, I hate it when, you know, a guy tries to cross it and it goes out for a corner. And he's like, oh, he tried to cross it and it went out for a corner. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> you know, like, I just saw that. Can you give me something that's so... I tried to go in, in with that mindset. I know I didn't get it right every time, but that was my mentality. Funny. So we, I appreciate uh, that. Thank you. Yeah, we, were, we had a guy uh, on the show a couple of weeks ago named Nick Hunley who used to be a catcher for the uh, Padres. Yeah, and when you, when you scored your goal, uh, we were in a live broadcast at that. When I say your goal, I mean the goal. Um, and Nick was on the phone and he was like, 
watching the game in his hotel room in Pittsburgh. Me and Billy Ray at the time were at a bar outside of Petco Park. You scored, and we're all going crazy, and the whole bar's going nuts. And Billy Ray yells to Nick, he goes, way to go, Nick, as if him being on the phone had something to do with it. And we like literally we called him to say, are you watching the World Cup? Do you remember this from 12 years ago? He remembered uh, it so vividly. He oh, had like, that's awesome, dude. it was, and, and he's like, dude, he goes, I'd love to meet Landon Donovan. I know he, cause you know, he's the assistant general manager now of the Texas Rangers. Really? And he lives here in San Diego. He's like, I would love to meet. And I'm like, dude, we'll put together a lunch. He, yeah, and, let's do a lunch. And where does he want to go? Your favorite sushi spot. Ken sushi, baby. Yep. Let's do it. I would love okay. to. Okay. I'm going to put it together. I promised him I would. That's cool. Yeah. I would love right, to. Man. Okay. Hey, enjoy the family. Um, hey, and, and enjoy the guys. time. Merry, yeah, Merry Christmas. Christmas, happy holidays, and uh, have a great new year. Yep. All right, guys. Congrats on the Hall of Fame. We didn't Thanks. say that. Yeah. I, I know. Shit. Gosh, what are we idiots? We're jerks. No, yeah. That's... Congratulations, man. <laughs> he, he gets that all the time now. <laughs> yeah, I should. I should start. Hall of I, Famer, I, Landon Donovan. I got to introduce him as Hall of Famer, Landon I'm Donovan. A little disrespected. You didn't introduce me that way. Yeah. Yeah. What a dick I am. Yeah. God, darn it. Right, we tell him that all the time. <laughs> LD, we'll talk to you, man. We appreciate you, buddy. See you Thank guys. you. All right, Landon Donovan stopping by. All right, everybody. So there you go. Uh, extended conversation with Landon Donovan. All right, guys, from Landon Donovan and his incredible experience at the World Cup, bring it home. Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty Services, 858-376-1299. Gary, let me ask you something. How did you like the boat trip on Saturday? <laughs> Man, I tell you what, I had such a great time. And it was nice to see uh, – to see Billy Ray, his wife, Kimberly, a lot of the great uh, friends uh, that I've done transactions for in the past, but you, Browner, Alex, what a great event, and it was so much fun. Yeah, I know this one was special because going out on the Yacht America with Next Level Sailing is, is great. I mean, most people don't get to see the city of San Diego from that perspective, and I would encourage everybody this holiday season, because this is when the locals go, when the whales are running, this, yep. this is when you should get on, on the boat with Captain Fathom and Captain Troy. But, Gare, to have Billy Ray and Kimberly come, to have Joe Rigby set up a tailgate party the way yep. he did, the Benson family, the way they come prepared, and to have people coming in from all over. Because we have people from L.A., we have people from San Diego. Yeah. It, it was – and 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 some of the OGs, too. Fat Tony, Gary from yep. Ego Trip. I mean, it, it just was – this was a very special holiday party that we that we threw. I loved it. I tell you what, it was family because it goes all the way back to when the show first started, tw almost 20 years ago mm -hmm. or 20 years ago. That's how long we've been together. Mm -hmm. So it was like bringing the family all back together. It was I nice know. to see Linda Welby. It's just, I mean, that was ideal. That really yeah. was. I know. It was, it was special. Really wonderful. It was great. And it was great to have you and Karina there as well. And it's Thank so you. nice that everybody knows each other. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, it, it is, it is family. So Gare, um, with the time that we have here today, leading up to the Christmas holiday, you always say, you know, hey, it's still a good time to buy a house. I'm curious, what's on your mind today from a real estate lending perspective as to where we are? I tell you what, I got two things on my mind, and they don't even relate to mortgage and real estate. Because I talk about that all year long. I got okay. two things. One, I have a local breaking story, exclusive story for San Diego that nobody knows except for right now on your show. Okay. Rockies and PB has been sold. Oh no way! Oh, good news for <laughs> good news for Browner. That is gonna be so happy. Browner, so happy. Exclusive. <laughs> Wait, but now, you know on. what though? Tell me. Here's That's the rest of the story. Proof. The rest of the story is. No, no, no. What? Well, hold on. Wait. The rest of the story is, and then Browner will explain. Go ahead. Okay. So the rest of the story is. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna forget his name all of a sudden. But anyway. He's bought the, the guy that's been working there for 16 years. I can't believe I'm going to forget his name. I apologize. Okay. He bought Rockies as of January 1st. So we asked, what's going to change? He goes, well, I'm going to add salads. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And he was just pulling her leg. He's saying Rockies is going to stay exactly the same. Nothing's changing. Okay. So wait, were you down there recently? Yeah. Was it the day that you went on the boat? No, 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 no. This was about two weekends ago. Okay. Kree yeah. and I, we go there all the time, and then we take our beach cruisers, and then we do our beach run along South Mission stuff. I'm so, I'm feeling so bad. I'm forgetting the guy's name. Hmm. Uh, he's been there for 16 years. No, it's not and, Doug, uh, is it? Huh? 
it's not Dove, is it? No. You know, Dove? Okay, forget it. All right, so bottom line is one of the people <laughs> who works there at Rockies is now buying Rockies. Correct, and they're going to keep it exactly the same. Nothing's changing, but he was kind of pulling right. her leg about throwing salads in and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But I think this is breaking news here. It is. It is breaking news, but, that, but the, the, it's good news and bad news. It's good because the place will remain on, serving you know some of the best burgers in all of San Diego. It's bad because if nothing's going to change, Browner's not, never going back again. Oh, Browner. Oh, Browner I don't everything, know, I don't... Everything's a problem. He's the Black Larry David. Everything's a problem everywhere he goes. Look, no, that's man, just too bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I got such poor service there that I've never had service that bad at any place ever that I've ever eaten. It was so bad, it almost seemed racial, but I had multiple people tell me that was not the case, and I no. believe them. And so I, I didn't throw that on them, but the service there from one person in particular was so egregious. I will never go back, ever. And when you said it was sold, I got to go laugh out of it. It's like, okay, now maybe I'll go back. But it sounds like nothing's going to change. So neither will I. <laughs> hey, so you know, you know what? what, Browner? I'm taking you. In fact, yeah. we're all going to go. We're yeah. all going to go. Yeah. Because they they definitely. And in fact, I even asked, "Do I have your permission to announce this on the Scott and Friends show?" And he said, "Absolutely, no problem." Because you know it's under wraps until January first. But I asked for permission first to give you this breaking news story, and we're going to hey. We are going to take Browner and give right, Browner, him the proper Browner, experience. Browner, let me ask you a question. Browner, let me ask you a question. Talk would you, me. would you, for Gary Cooper, for Gary, it's a personal favor. Would you give it a second? Would you give it another try, even though you've sworn it off for life, for Gary Cooper? I will say this about that. I will go for Gary. What the the part about it that I won't like is that I had to go with someone mad popular. For them to treat me with respect. You know, that should not be the case. Right, Any person right, wait, that walks wait. up to that place should get the same amount of respect, okay. even if they're mortgage legendary seller like our guy here or somebody who they never seen. They All don't right. know who he is like All right. me. All right. I got an idea. You go in by yourself. Yeah. No. You sit down. No, no. You sit down. See what kind of service you get. And then <laughs> 10 minutes later, we all come walking in. What do we do? Okay, sure, sure. Okay. All right, Gary, you said you had something like else. like a Karen, besides, Browner. Besides, I know you are. Oh, how dare you, sir? <laughs> you are. You, Gary, you yeah. said you had a second. They thing. were mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go on to my second thing, but I have one last word on this Rockies thing. Yeah. I promise you, I've been going there my entire life. And they've, and I know these guys on a personal level to know that Browner. I just think something was a uh, went, was a little quirky. I don't know what it is, but that's just not their demeanor. They are really good guys. They really are. And you know, I mostly know the guys that work the weekends and stuff. Maybe there's some guys I don't know that are during the week. I don't know, but I'll tell you what. The guys I do know, I tell you what, they're solid people. I believe you. Thing, I, be I believe you because everyone said the exact same thing that you said. So maybe yeah. I, me, individual, just no, had a bad experience. No, there. no. This guy. It, no. It couldn't have been you. Yeah. No. All right. It wasn't because so, of me. <laughs> I'm only teasing you, man. All right, Gary, what's what's part two here today? Part two is the most important thing of the year. I sincerely want to thank you, Scott, Browner, Alex. I really sincerely appreciate our friendship. And that's what it's always been. It's never been business. It's always been a friendship. And I really appreciate you guys allowing me to come onto the show talk mortgage and real estate. But I also want to thank the listeners of the great friend show, because honestly, you guys, I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of you allow me to earn your business. I take it personal. It means a lot to me. So great friends. I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. It's a little awkward. I think in the last couple of years, because of COVID, because I used to always meet face to face with my clients, but so many people like to be able to just do things on the go and on the computer, do the app. And I, there's a lot of people I have not got to meet. So therefore there's a less personal touch. Mm -hmm. And I really struggle with that because I don't want to just be a person. Yeah. Who did your mortgage? Yeah. Some guy on the radio or I listen to my tonight and they forget when they come and sit with me and I get to see them face to face and be able to show them and educate them face to face. There's a lot much of a bigger personal touch. 
But I want all the listeners to know, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I wish everyone a wonderful Christmas, holiday season, happy new year, prosperous next year. But you boys, thank you so much. I really appreciate our friendship. Yeah. Gary, right back to you, man, because, um, look, you know, this is a, uh, it's, it's hard when you own your own business, you know, like it really is like my, I have a job in LA. They pay me every week. They, they give me nice perks to go to Disneyland. Okay. That's a job. And I, and and if I want a day off, I got to kiss somebody's ass to get it, or I won't get it. You know, that's a job. When you have a business like you have, like we have here, you got to hustle all the time, you know? And so I know how hard it is to be hustling all the time. Um, and I, listen, I just appreciate you being our partner. And like you said, it's much more about friendship than it is about business. So, Hey, Gary, we got to hustle up. Happy new year to you. Merry Christmas to you, your family and the extended family from mountain trust. And we look forward to a healthy and prosperous 2023. Right back at you. Great friends. Great friends. Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299, 376 1299. See you later, Coop. See you guys. Kaplan Accrued tonight is brought to you by Jackery Solar Generator. Explore further with Jackery Solar Generator. Locally owned and operated, not some bland, uninspired, corporate, cookie cutter radio station crap. We simply say to those stations, you the mightier 1090 espn radio socal sports talk many are adding companion units or adus to bring more value to their homes our experience plus our strong relationship with the city makes adding on easier for our homeowners we listen to you first then design and build visit murraylampert.com for your consultation The Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank needs your help feeding families and seniors in need this holiday season. Provide food assistance to those in need at hundreds of food distribution sites throughout San Diego County. Today we're here at one of our senior food program distribution sites in Chula Vista where we're going to be serving over 450 seniors at this one location. The San Diego Food Bank has been around since 1977. Uh, We are currently serving over 500,000 people every single month. We were serving 350,000 people throughout all of San Diego County just before the pandemic. So the need has definitely increased. We are here and wanting to make sure that families um, know where they can access food and that folks who want to contribute know how to donate to the food bank to continue to support those 500,000 families every single month. Happy Holidays from the San Diego Food Bank. Many are adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to their homes. Our experience, plus our strong relationship with the city, makes adding on easier for our homeowners. We listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. If you're going to count yourself as a fan of this radio station, you will need to continuously ask yourself one basic question. Am I listening? Enough. Pro tip, wives are not a good source for input on this. This is the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. Many are adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to their homes. Our experience, plus our strong relationship with the city, makes adding on easier for our homeowners. We listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. On every mountain and valley you tread, through wind and rain, we're here with you to shine a light when it gets dark and to forge a path where it gets tough. Let Jackery Solar power all your hopes and dreams. Take you where you want to go, to the goals you chase, to the ones you love. Explore further with Jackery Solar. Jackery, 10 years on. I don't have a penny to my name. You're hired. It's great, Mom. We're about to lose the store and you're hiring the homeless. 
us. You know, we could dress him up like Santa. We could charge kids to take pictures with him. He's a natural. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Get ready to meet some of the best high school athletes in America this week.